Ooh, hello! My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Whoa! So unless you've just been totally ignoring YouTube for the last couple of months, I am sure that you have seen a number of people doing different tiered lists using Tier Maker. Uh, I really enjoy these videos. The first time I saw one of these tier things, I was always, I was kind of like intrigued by it. Uh, I thought it was really fun. And as it has become more and more of a trend, I've been thinking to myself, I would like to try to find uh, a way to maybe do these from time to time. So I thought that today to like test the water, see how you guys feel about these, uh, I thought that I would do two tiered lists. So the first one, um, I just did kind of like a search for classic books. So I thought that I would just grab a list of classics and kind of talk about what I think about them. I thought that might be kind of fun. And then the second one is one that I created and it's in response. Somebody uh, asked for a full video about Nalini Singh books, which I just don't, I don't think I'm going to do that, but I thought this might be a way to test the idea of picking an author whose work I've read a lot of and ranking all of the books that I've read from them for that. So first one's going to be me ranking a bunch of classics and the second one is going to be me ranking all the Nalini Singh books I've read. So strap in. Like I said, I really enjoy these videos so I hope that you enjoy it as well and uh, we'll experiment with this new format. So first up we've got this classics one and as you can see that they, they've gone the god tier route. They have more tiers than some of the ones I've seen so I have more options and uh, yeah let's just let's see how we do. Okay first is Sense and Sensibility which I think I have concluded recently it's probably my second favorite Austin. Well I see Pride and Prejudice next to it. That one is god tier like I don't feel like I have to talk about that. No duh. Sense and Sensibility is my second favorite Jane Austen and I do love Jane Austen so I feel like probably that's in the demigod tier. Okay, next we got a lot of Jane Austen. Next is Persuasion, which is I think I agree objectively probably her best one, but is not necessarily a personal all-time favorite. I do think it's really good, so I'm somewhere between good and great. I think I'm gonna go with good, and then I'm gonna put Emma and great because so this is literally like ranking these and then is Northanger yeah Northanger Abbey's on here too and I would also you know I say that both of these are four stars so I feel like I can't not put them at least in great I think I think these are three all belong in great though I will say Emma is my favorite of these so there you go beloved so here's the thing I know objectively beloved is great I did not personally enjoy it really at all. <laughs> it was sort of like a traumatic family experience. We all, it was an audiobook one year for vacation. None of us liked it. So um, objectively, I know that this is probably like in God tier, but for me, none of us liked it. So I have to put it in bad. It wasn't like trash. This is trash. It wasn't trash. It just wasn't for me. So we'll put that in bad. Uh, Jane Eyre, all time favorite book. No duh, that's going to go in God tier. And then we've got Wuthering Heights. I enjoyed this as a teen. I I still appreciate it. I don't think I can put it in the great tier. I think it belongs in the good tier. I enjoyed it. I don't know that I would have enjoyed it if I read it as an adult, but I did enjoy it as things stand. North and South, uh, I have not yet read. It's on my TBR for this year. I have the audio out right now. Um, so here, okay. Ooh, okay. 100 Years of Solitude. I DNF this, so I think I have to put it in trash. I don't think it's actually trash, it's just not for me. Um, but if these are my options, I DNF'd it, so there you go. Uh, I'm also, okay, I didn't read A Farewell to Arms, so I don't have to do that one. Um, Vonnegut, I'm gonna put this in bad. <laughs> Slaughterhouse-Five. I read this as a teen and just, I didn't understand what made it special. It was okay. Maybe it belongs in okay. Maybe it belongs in okay. Okay. Yeah, that's, we'll put it there. I, I just never have really understood what the hype on this one is. I know people love it. It's just, it didn't fully click for me. Then we've got The Crying of Lot 49, I think is what that one is. I've never read that one, so I'm going to leave it alone. As I Lay Dying, I also DNF'd. So we'll put it there in the trash. Uh, again, I feel like that's harsh because I objectively understand that these are like meritorious works of literature. They just weren't for me. So uh, Handmaid's Tale, I could just, I for me, this one was only just okay. I love the message of this book, 
but the actual book was only okay to me. I can't tell which Melville this is. I'm, I see people on boats. I'm gonna assume Moby Dick. And once again, I'm gonna have to say trash because I DNF'd it. I've tried several times and I just never can get through. So for whatever that's worth. Daisy Miller, I enjoyed. I put that in good. Uh, I had a good time with this one. Nice and short. Henry James, lovely. Follow the House of Usher. I also remember reading and enjoying this at some point. So let's call it good. Sure, good. Uh, Frankenstein, I also put as good. Um, I gave that a four star, but it was like a weak four star. Uh, I, I think it's definitely worth reading. It didn't stand out as a favorite. Um, Herman Melville Typey, haven't read that. Also haven't read The Bluest Eye by Toni Morrison because of my experience with Beloved. Daniel Defoe, The Complete Adventures of Something. Don't think I've read that. I have not yet read The Bell Jar uh, by Sylvia Plath. I would, I would like to do that, um, but I have not yet. So we'll have to leave that there. I'm gonna guess this is either Ivanhoe or Beowulf. I have read Beowulf and would put that in good, but see, this is quite annoying. Uh, some of these images, you can't tell what they are. I can't tell what that is. I think this is Ivanhoe and I have not read, yet read Ivanhoe. So we're just gonna leave this one alone. Okay, Franny and Zoo, I really enjoyed when I read it. I wouldn't say it's actually all that memorable to me, however, in terms of like, could I really tell you what happened in it? No, so I'm gonna put that in good. Uh, I have not yet read East of Eden. I want to try some shorter Steinbeck to see as if as an adult I can get into his writing style. And if I like that, I think I'll read East of Eden as like a big one to enjoy. Great Gatsby. I'm going to put that in Demi God one because I really genuinely still love The Great Gatsby. I studied it in high school. I've read it probably two, maybe three times since then. And each time I just really enjoy it. So I love that one. Similarly, I love Candide. I think that this is somewhat a function of this is the first book I read completely in French and I love the ideas in it and the writing and the humor. I love this one. So I'm going to also put that as uh, in Demigod for me. Breakfast at Tiffany's I thought was fine. I'm going to put that as okay. It was, I think the movie's better to be honest. So there you go. Uh, I have not yet read The Sun Also Rises. A Tale of Two Cities I liked but didn't love as a kid. So let's put that as okay. I have not yet read The Joy Luck Club. Ethan Frome, I remember liking okay in high school. So we'll put that as okay. Um, I think this is a Grapes of Wrath cover. Y'all know I be hating that book. <laughs> so I'm putting that in the trash tier. My Antonia, I wouldn't say I have as much of a vitriolic response to. So I'm gonna just put that in bad. It's not for me, but I see the merits there. Huckleberry Finn, for me, I'm between good and okay on this one. I think just because some of the things in it haven't aged as well, I'm going to just say okay. Like, I, it was fine. It, it, it was okay. Scarlet Letter. I really love the Scarlet Letter. Um, this is another one that, for me, my high school experience didn't, like, scar me from it. So I really liked it. And I would put it as great. I have not yet read Of Mice and Men. That's one of the small Steinbecks I want to try to read. Haven't read A Tree Grows in Brooklyn. To Kill a Mockingbird, I wouldn't quite put in God tier, but I think I would put it in Demigod. I mean, it's it's one of those books, I think especially being from the South, I don't know. It just really thematically is very resonant to me. Oh, I just saw that Moby Dick is coming up, so I don't know what this is. I'm going to put it back. <laughs> Moby Dick, where is it? Okay, that I'm going to put in trash. There we go. Um, okay, so The Giver. I don't think I love this the way some people do. Um, I do really enjoy it. I would, ooh, for children's classic literature, I think I would put that as a great. I mean, it's really memorable. It's something, it's one of those books that I feel like I reference as a counterpoint to things. Okay, I put that in great. And then Number of the Stars, I loved this book. This was a really impactful book. I would put this, this is one of the great works of like children slash like kind of middle grade literature to me. I love Number of the Stars, so I would have to put that in Demigod. Um, similarly, I'm gonna say Animal Farm is another one that really, really stuck with me. And I would put that in Demigod as well. Um, I think it just, Orwell man, I, I have his collection of essays and I need to get back to those. I can't, yeah. Anyway, he just is very relevant and I think this is a, a parable 
um, type story that really has stood the test of time. Little Prince, Le Petit Prince, uh, is another one I read en français and um, therefore have a lot of affection for. I don't think I get it the same way some people, it didn't like emotionally connect to me the way some people emotionally connect to it with, connect with it too. I don't know what my prepositions are. I'm lost in my prepositions. I don't connect with it as much as some people do. Um, so I'm going to put it in great. Mm, great? Actually, I'm going to just say good. It's good to me. It's not great. Wizard of Oz, I don't think I ever actually read the book, so I'm not going to rank it. Treasure Island was okay. I remember reading that as a kid and it was just fine. Jekyll and Hyde, same way, read it as a kid. It was just fine. Book Thief, for me, again, just okay. I also don't know why it's on a list of classics, to be honest. Um, I don't I don't think that this is a classic, but there you go. And then I'm going to assume this is the complete short stories of Edgar Allan Poe. I really enjoy those. So um, these are all of my rankings, my tiering for for the classics list I found, uh, I'd write a good number of these. So God tier really is Pride and Prejudice and Jane Eyre, and that makes sense because those are the only two of these that are on my top 10 list of all time favorite books. And then I've got, let's see, six that I would put right under that. Six great, six good, nine okay, too bad, and four trash. Uh, this is the only one of these that I actually finished, but I... Anyway, um, so there we go. So this is my first one. This is the classics one. Oh, I can share this to Twitter. This is kind of fun. For people who, who follow me on Twitter, you'll get a little preview. That's the first one. Now let's get into Nalini Singh. So the way I did this is S is superior, and then N are ones that I've not yet read because I just didn't want to leave any ones down here, uh, and Ds are the real bad ones. So let's see how we do. The thing is I love Nalini Singh, so <laughs> These are going to probably be pretty high ranked. So A Madness of Sunshine. This is the only standalone title I have on here. And I'm somewhere between an A and a B. I think for her first thriller, it's definitely an A. But I think in terms of overall books that I love from her, I would put it more as a B. But it's still super good, which I think I'll say a lot in this. Um, Allegiance of Honor, I think, is solidly a B. It's a good transition book. So this is one. Uh, this is the kind of like resetting the stage in the side changeling world from one season to the second season kind of a thing. So a lot of it is just like hang time with your favorite characters, as opposed to a lot of forward momentum. So that is very enjoyable, but it doesn't really like fully move the plot forward. So I would say it's between a B and a C, but I'm gonna give it, I'll leave it as a B. Alpha Knight is solidly an A. This is the one that's coming out this year. It is so good. I just loved it. It's not like S tier, but it is one of the best ones in that series, and I really enjoy it. Okay, so now we get to our first angel situation. So one question that I get a lot from people is um, what what I think about, like, which should they do the Side Changeling or the Archangel? What is it called? Guild Hunter series. If you don't know, the Side Changeling series has these, like, psychic characters and then changelings or, like, shifters. Those are the two sort of, like, magically beings and but it's urban fantasy so it's set in our world and then for the guild hunter series it's angels and vampires so overall i 1000 percent prefer Psy changeling my problem with the arc the guild hunter series i always want to call it the archangel series but the guild hunter series is that it so in Psy changeling each book follows new couples in Guild Hunter, you get a lot of books with the same main couple, which are Elena and Raphael. Raphael's an archangel, and then like Elena is a vampire hunter, and there's also like a line of like magically vampire hunters that she comes from. They're faded mates, so like a lot of the rest of the series is about the two of them. And that I like them, but I don't love them. I like a lot of the other characters in the series more, so I tend to prefer books that are not focused on them. Okay. So I said all that. All that to say, Angel's Blood is the first one. It features Elena and Raphael. And I do, I do really like this one. I would put it between an A and a B. And I think I'll say an A because I do think it's a really intriguing book. And it's the first in that series. And I think it does a good job of like hooking you in. So I'll put that one as an A. The next one we've got up is Angel's Flight. And actually, I'm also going to put this as an A because I think that the Guild Hunter series is actually at its best in its novellas. I think they have really good novellas in that series. So I think that's some of her best stuff. Um, so I would put that there. 
Then next up we've got, and sorry, I've got my Goodreads open so that I can keep all of these titles straight. Okay, Archangel's Blade. This one, if I'm remembering rightly, is Homeboy who, let's see here. Oh yeah, Dimitri, that guy. Yeah, there's a lot of angst in this one that I personally wasn't wild about. So I'm going to put it as a C. It was fine, but not to me. One of the better ones. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Okay. Archangel's Consort. Okay, this is one with Elena and Raphael. And I think this one was another one where I was like, mm, this is okay. It's only okay. This one's not, I don't know. You're seeing my bias here clearly towards the side changeling because in that one I'm like, they're all amazing. How do I pick? And in the, these, it's more like, mm. okay, Archangel's Enigma though. I remember really liking this one. This is, um, I think, with the really uh, like feral guy, like the really feral guy in Raphael's crew because he has like a whole crew of dudes who work for him. And some of the side books or some of the books are about them finding their faded mate. And those are the ones I tend to like better. So this one I would actually give, mm, I think I'd put that, eh. <laughs> you know, if I gave Angel's Blood an A, I would give this one an A too. I like that one. Archangel's Heart is one, this is where I stalled out because I was getting back in the groove and then I saw that like, fuck, it's another Elena and Raphael book and I'm tired of those. So this is one I have not yet read. I This project though is making me think that maybe it's time for me to reread the Guild Hunter series and pick back up with it so that I can enjoy the new releases. But anyway, this is where I stalled out and this one came out when? In 2016. So it's been like four or five years since I've been reading along with these. And so maybe it's time to get back in the water. Okay. So I've not yet read that one. And then this one I think is Archangel's Kiss. And this is the second book in the series. And I thought this one was really just only okay. Um, this was where I was like, oh, I don't know if I'm going to love it always being about Elena and Raphael. It was fine. It just wasn't great. Okay, say it with me. Another one that was fine but not great was Archangel's Legion. This is another Elena and Raphael book. I should tell you, this is making me sound like I don't like the series. I do. What I like, though, about the series is only the political machinations. And I'm much less attached to the characters than I am in the Side Changeling universe, where I'm very attached to both. Like, that's what makes that series so special to me. So, but, you know, some people absolutely prefer the Guild Hunter series over Side Changeling. So this is very much about taste, not some sort of empirical value. Okay. And then, so that's Archangel's Legion. It's only just okay, as I've been saying. Uh, Archangel's Prophecy. This is one that I have not yet read. Archangel's Blade. I remember liking this one. Oh no, this is Archangel's Shadows. Sorry, I was double checking the title. Okay, Archangel's Shadows. Yes, I do remember liking this one. I'm going to give this one a B. I'm mm -hmm, somewhere between here. Did I like Enigma? I think I liked Enigma a little bit better than Shadows, but this, this was another good one in the series that I enjoyed. And it was not about Elena and Raphael. It's about two of their like tracker people who were great. And I just get excited whenever I don't have to just read about Elena and Raphael. Okay, and then Archangel Storm. This is not an Elena and Raphael one. And I remember, I still only gave it three stars. I remember it more fondly than that. But if I only gave it three stars, I don't know. You know what? I'm going to say this one's a B because I remember this is like um, one of the other Archangels gets killed, I believe. Or like their consort gets killed, something like that. And there's like a murder mystery involved. It was fun. I remember liking this one. So I'm going to give that one a B. Also, just for the love of not having to read about Elena. Yeah. Uh, Archangel's Vipers. Have not read this one yet. This was after uh, I kind of pushed pause on the series. And then Archangel's War is the most recent one that came out. So I have not yet read that. There is another one supposed to come out this year, but we don't have a cover yet. So I've not yet read those four. So in theory, I should catch up with this series. We'll see if that happens. Okay, now that we've gotten through that, we can start talking about so I changed Ling again. Oh, okay. And we get to start off with some hot takes. So Blaze of Memory. This one I'm going to put, uh, I'm going to put this in C territory because this is an incredibly emotional book. It involves amnesia and it involves an incurable disease. And so it felt a little bit like the Laureline McDaniel slash uh, The Fault in Our Stars edition of Side Changeling. So like, did I cry in this book? Of course I did. I'm a human with a heart. 
but I felt like it was a little emotionally manipulative and I don't think it's one of the best books in the series. Um, I do think it expands the world in some interesting ways, so that's nice, but yeah, I don't think this is one of the best. Uh, and then Bonds of Justice, I'm also going to give a C to just because I think it's one of the sort of like kind of middle of the roady ones. Like it's interesting. We get a human. Oh, look, it's creating. That's kind of fun. Do you see that it's creating a face here? Um, it's it's with one of the humans, which I think is fun. Like that's one of the, the main characters. And we don't see humans very often in the side changeling books. Um, so I think there's some interesting parts of it and the human involved is Max and he's interesting, but it's just, I don't think it's like one of the superior entries in the Side Changeling series. In contrast to Branded, is it called Branded by Fire? That sounds right. Um, I think it's Branded by Fire. Branded by Fire is not S tier, but it's definitely A tier. It's Mercy's book. She's one of the female sentries with the cats under Homeboy, what's his face? The, lead, the alpha, whose book is the first one. I don't remember anybody's names, you can tell. Um, Branded by Fire is really, really good. It's two really strong characters. It's the first inter-shifter one we see. So it's with a cat gal who is like alpha and a wolf dude who's like alpha. And they are both like trusted. They're like kind of like the seconds of the alphas of their respective clans. And so there's a lot of drama and it's it brings it brings the two shifter groups together a lot closer for future books and they're just great it's a really good one and she's very tough which is fun however caressed by ice is definitely s tier for those who read the series they know jed is bae this book kills me it gets to me at such a deep level because like strong dudes who have not been allowed to feel their feelings starting to feel feelings is just my catnip it's so good I love it it's so good it's one of it's one of the best books in the series and I think if you are a reader of the side changeling series you will agree cherish heart I have been saving for rainy day so I have not yet read this one this is like a break the glass if you need just a comfy contemporary kind of thing Heart of Obsidian is also S tier because this is my favorite book Melanie Singh has ever written. It is my favorite book in the Side Changeling series. It is fantastic. It's so good. Um, I can't really say much about it because it would be spoilery, but it's amazing. Hostage to Pleasure. Wow. Okay. Hostage to Pleasure. Oh, yeah. This is the one where he's got, he's trying to protect the mom and her kid. It's fine. It's, it's fine. It's not one of the better ones, but it, it gets the job done. Kiss of Snow, however, is another S tier. This is the one with the head of the wolf pack getting together with, I forget what her name is, but she's the Psy with the, um, X, is it X designation? I think if you've read the series, you know, this is a great book. There's a lot of like angst. He thinks that he already had his mate and she died, but now he's got a new mating dance and they didn't know that that was a thing. And it's really good. Okay, so that one is definitely S tier. Mine to possess is a D because he is a chauvinistic asshole with very few redeeming qualities in this book. It's not, it's not the T. Ocean Light, I'm gonna say is between, I'm kind of between a B and a C on this one. I don't know, it's a perfectly enjoyable entry. I think that there's some fun things about it. We do learn more about the ocean shifters, which is cool. But I think it's only kind of middle, it's like good, not great. So I guess I would put it here. I may move it up to B. We'll see how things shake out. I may come back to that one. Play of Passion, I think, is solidly between a B and an A. This one is really fun. It plays with like an age difference between the two male, uh, between the two leads. They're both really dominant alphas and that like plays into things. I don't think the political machinations are as good, but this, I remember really liking this one, so I'm going to put it as an A. Rebel Heart, I'm going to put as a B. I remember almost nothing about it other than I enjoyed it, but this is a contemporary, and look at those abs. Yeah, this one I remember being good, fun, good times. Rock Addiction is another D for me. This is an insta-love situation that, like, she just didn't sell me on, and it actually put me on bad footing for the rest of this rock series, which we're talking about. These are contemporaries, and they all feature or are around a family, or not a family, a band. Um, so it's, like, contemporary with a rock star trope. Um, 
this one I just didn't think was that good. But I know a lot of people really enjoyed it. It just wasn't my deal. I did like Rock Courtship better, which was the novella in between. Um, I like this one better. It just was a novella and it didn't have enough time to fully develop, but I thought it was good. I have a lot of things in C. It's just that her good books are so good. I think I'm being harsh. I should tell you, anything that's a C or higher, it, you're going to have a pretty good time in. Like, these are not bad. They just, I'm trying to, I'm trying to impose good... I'm trying to, I'm trying to be strict with myself and not just put everything in like, this is amazing. Okay, Rock Hard is also an S tier. This is my favorite of her contemporaries that she's written. Again, it just trope wise really worked for me. It's like a heroine has been wounded. Hero is like big, strong dude. And he wants to like take care of her. But the things that he needs to take care of are her emotions. And he wants to have, be able to just like punch something and make things better for her. And he has to learn how to how to have like feeling like support with his feelings and not with just his money and his fists and his dick. Um, so it's just, it works for me. It's really good. And this is in the rock contemporary series, but it also branches off into this like family of rugby players. And that's what these um, like cherish hard, rebel hard, the hard series. It's in both of them. It's in both the rock series and the hard series, I guess is the way to say it. Because of my experience with these two books, I did not read Rock Redemption because I believe this is like a friends, a tortured, angsty friends to lovers story. Rock Wedding is a second chance at romance series or trope, and that is a tough sell for me. So I kind of just noped out of that series at this point. I'm not sure if I'll ever really come back to those. Shards of Hope is another S tier in the side changeling world. It is a really, it's between two arrows in the Psy and Aid, it's Aiden and Zara and it's just amazing. Like there was this little run cause oh yeah, Shield of Winter, ugh, S and A. I'm gonna put it as A, but there was a little run of these side changeling books between Heart of Obsidian, then Shield of Winter, then Shards of Hope. That was number 12, 13 and 14. And those are three of the very best books in the series. That little run of them I just thought was excellent. Silver Silence, I'm going to put as a B. It's really good. It's solid. I just don't think that there's enough like plot movement in these for it to quite be an A, but this is a really enjoyable one that I quite like. Slave to Sensation, I'm going to put that as an A because it's the first in the Side Changeling series and it's what like established the world and like it's just, I don't know. I think it stood up pretty well. Um, some of the gender stuff in it is a little tough for me, but overall I still think this is really, really good. Tangle of Need. Ooh, I'm gonna put that as a C because this is one where it's an interesting idea. It's exploring the idea that one of these shifters has already found their mate, but their mate rejected them. So now they're in a relationship with someone else. So it's exploring the idea of like, what if you're not someone's fated mate? Can you still be happy? And like, the answer is yes. And I think that's interesting, but it's just a little too angsty for me I think um so it just wasn't it's not my favorite of them but it was an interesting idea I'm glad she explored it and then let's see the last well no okay Wolf Rain I'm gonna say is definitely an A this is one that came out last year this is another one that I would say is borderline S but this this and Alpha Knight these two recent ones are both really really good entries in the series yeah this one was really good Visions of Heat though is the other um, full novel. I would put it as a B. It's the second book in the series. It's a little bit of a sophomore slump, but it's still a really solid entry. It's really, it's really fun. And then last, we have the two um, short story collections in the Side Changeling series. And I would put Wild Embrace as a B. There's some good stories in there, but I don't think it's as memorable. But Wild Invitation, I think, is really strong and has some really good novellas in it. Um, there's one, the one that, the two, actually, there's two in it that I think stand out. So, this is my ranking. I'm actually kind of surprised at how many C's I have. But again, I'm applying like a Nalini Singh standard. So like for a Nalini Singh, these are okay, only okay. Compared to other books, these would be good. So take that with a grain of salt. So yeah, that is my tiering of these. Okay, so that was my first attempt at doing kind of one of these tier videos. This was this was fun. I enjoyed this. So let me know what you think about me doing more of these. If you'd be more interested in me doing one where I pick an author and go through all of their list. 
Um, or if you're more interested in me doing one of the kind of pre-made ones to respond to. Characters, like different types of character ranking or ranking some of my past favorites. I don't know. I, there's lots of things I could do. So just let me know if this is something you guys are into in the comments below. And yeah, I think that that will do it for now. So if you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it. I hope you're having an absolutely lovely day today and I will just talk to you soon.